This is the battle between Iranian number one Parham Maksudlu and Vidit Gujarati. In these times of COVID, everyone is very safe, you know, playing it safe. Vidit uses the sanitizer to clean his hands before the game. Parham wipes his hands on his trousers, getting ready. The crowd is excited for this battle. Parham adjusts the pieces slightly late for the battle. All other games have begun. And with it starts the clock. C4 by Parham. With it instantly responds with the symmetrical variation. G3, G6. Both players playing the same moves. Soon we'll have a symmetry. A3 by Parham trying to expand with b4 with it goes knight f6 and there we have the symmetry is broken short castles by black and b4 by parham with it instantly takes it and a6 you can see how with it is quickly making his moves he didn't have a great day on day one that's the reason why he's come out with aggression now the normal move would be knight f3 or d3 but with it is angling for rook b8 and b5 in this position Parham taking his time, he's down to 2 minutes 40 seconds on the clock, with it is 3 minutes 6 seconds, there's a 2 second increment here, you can feel the silence in the playing hall, generally you don't think for so much time in the opening, but Parham wants to be sure with his move, he goes d4 and with it instantly responds d6. Now d4 was perhaps not the best move because now with it can slowly hit these pawns. The d4, c4 and b4 pawns. Firstly with it is thinking what's the best way to take advantage of this. A very good idea now would be to play a5 so that he's hacking at the structure. If b5 then he can jump with his knight on b4. Let's see if with it can find this move. The c4 pawn is also slightly weak, so later on the bishop can move to e6. Yes, he's found a5, hitting the structure, b5 and the knight jumps to b4. The knight is beautifully positioned there. It is some kind of an outpost, but Parham instantly attacks it. Now Vidit goes bishop f5, attacking the rook. The pawn comes to e4. Look at how Vidit is provoking one weakness after another. Now the c4 pawn is attacked here. So... Parham has to decide how to deal with it. If he takes on b4, after a b4, rook b4, his dark squares would be very weak and queen coming out to a5 could be very very dangerous in that particular scenario. So Parham does not want to take on b4 as of now but what to do about the c4 pawn and if he pushes his d pawn forward that would be creating a lot of weaknesses on c5 and the dark squares on this diagonal. If you push the spawn, this bishop opens up. Parham anyway pushes it. And now with it goes to g4, creating further dark square weaknesses. And now comes back with his bishop. Parham not only is low on time, but his position also does not seem appetizing. He does not want to win that pawn on b4 and have all his dark squares weak. So he develops his knight to e2. Now Vidit has to decide how to take advantage of this thing. He has everything under control. White wants to castle in this position and get his king safely to h1. And Vidit stops it with his queen now. White can no longer castle as the queen is looking at this diagonal. Parham is in trouble here. But he has an interesting idea here. He can play his knight to a4, hit the queen. And if the queen goes to a7, he can push the pawn to b6. For now, he plays queen d2. Maybe stopping queen e3 ideas and now preparing knight a4 again. With it brings his rook f to c8. Now the knight jumps to a4. So Parham has now pushed this queen away from this diagonal and can castle the next move. With it, where does he move his queen? Does it go to c7? Does it go to d8? 
these are the questions he has to grapple with he goes to c7 attacking the pawn on c4 now the c4 pawn is hanging parham defends it with his rook and sensing now that white has kind of caught up in development i think vidit must open the position somehow e6 looks like a very logical move in this position somehow parham has managed to stabilize things here but still black's position looks pretty good and with it now down to 1 minute 20 seconds he plays his pawn to e6 parham has only 44 seconds on the clock he's played a little too slowly he castles here and with it takes on d5 now should you take with the e pawn or the c pawn that's an important question taking with the c pawn will attack the queen but it would also mean that the b5 pawn would get weak and parham hardly has any time now he takes with the c pawn queen comes back now notice how the b5 pawn is hanging here parham takes on b4 but with it now has a tactical opportunity he can take on c1 and then take on b5 look at how with it has paused here generally when a player captures something you automatically recapture but a good player always pauses thinks a takes b4 is a good move but can you find a better move and with it does just that he takes on c1 rook takes c1 and now bishop takes b5 attacks the knight also the bishop with parham having close to 20 seconds this is becoming increasingly difficult for the iranian player bishop to c3 has been played he takes on a4 queen comes to b2 now parham is pawn down black has two passers here but he has pressure down this diagonal is that enough don't think so b5 by with it preparing for pushing the bishop further with b4 but parham comes back now b4 can be met with queen takes a4 as well or first taking on f6 and then the a4 bishop would be hanging so with it has to remain careful here he cannot push his pawns perhaps he goes rook to c8 black is better here bishop f1 is a nice move now preparing knight d4 also looking at the weakened c6 square with it also burning a lot of time is down to 30 seconds parham has 10 seconds on the clock how does with it continue now this is not an easy decision perhaps he can push b4 perhaps he can start pushing with his h pawn creating weakness on the king side and he does exactly that king comes up and it's time for pushing forward with h4 but look at the time with it as only 11 seconds he pushes his pawn to h4 and now parham goes to d4 he wants to look at the c6 square he's also attacking the b5 square there is no time to think both players down to their final seconds and with it now goes for tactical complications he plays his knight to h5 parham goes in with knight to c6 attacking the queen also the bishop on g7 with it moves his queen to g5 what an attack this is he takes on g7 and knight e7 check is there somewhere with it takes on g3 knight e7 the rook is hanging king gets seven oh my god it's a mate in one on h8 who's going to win this is with it going to win or parham knight f4 both players down to their last seconds g takes h2 and now king should have taken the pawn but he goes to f2 and oh on the promote to a knight check king e3 he takes on d5 it's a double check and the king white king is completely exposed with it gives a check with his knight and there you go queen e3 mate oh my god what an unbelievable game this was with it gujarati had mate in one on his king but he managed to get to parham's king faster unbelievable game and finally a smile on with its face what a nice player parham is he is discussing the game with his opponent because that was a fascinating encounter of attack and defense well played by both of them especially with it gujarati